Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. For some backstory, I, 26 female, am a product of my father's affair. My three half-siblings, Jacob, 36 male, Lily, 32 female, and Helen, 30 male, have never wanted anything to do with me. And at first, my father didn't either. When I was around six, though, my mother died. Nobody wanted an affair, baby, so I ended up living with my father and his family after all. I was treated differently, like a guest in their home. I could tell my father resented me for ruining his family. I tried my best to make my siblings like me, hoping they'd warm up to me eventually, but they made it clear they never wanted a relationship. I know Reddit is generally forgiving of people like my siblings, and that's fine. I get it. They don't have to want a relationship with the brat who tore their family apart. But once I got over trying to beg for their love, I began to hate them. They had two living parents who actually wanted them, college funds, toys, therapy, and siblings who loved them. I had none of that. My father hated me. He barely spent a cent on me. My mother was dead, and they all wanted nothing to do with me. But I was the monster for just being born. It's taken years to accept that I was unwanted by my siblings, but I got through it. I got myself through life, into college, into a good apartment, and very well-paying job I love. Recently, though, Lily reached out to me. Apparently, she's pregnant. She says becoming a mother made her realize how important family is, so she wants me to be in her and her child's life. I admit, I wasn't very cordial. I asked harshly why I'd want a relationship with the people who abandoned and rejected me for so many years. Lily said her baby was innocent in all this, and that I owed my nephew a relationship. I admit, I lost it at that, and I ended up screaming at her. Her baby's innocent in this? Where was that attitude when I lost my ducking mom and my entire remaining family rejected me at six years old? Where was that attitude when I practically begged for their love for years? I screamed at Lily that I don't know why she suddenly wants me in her life, whether it's money for the baby or to ease her own guilt, but that she made this bed and now I'd make damn sure she lies in it. Since then I haven't heard from Lily, but Helen and Jacob have been trying to contact me to call me a monster for screaming at my own pregnant sister. I don't feel bad for not wanting a relationship, but admittedly, I lost it a little bit, and now I feel like screaming at Lily may have been too far, especially since stress probably isn't good for the baby. I don't know. Am I the a-hole here? I feel like I might be. Edit. Because people keep saying they were children. Lily is six years older than me and was cruel to me for my entire childhood. She was 18 calling a 12-year-old a monster and a brat for ruining her family, and when I was 18 and she was 24, she mocked me for how I'd have to move out and stop leeching off her dad now. I understand why they'd be harsh as children. I understand not wanting a relationship. But my oldest sibling was 16 when I moved in with him, and they were all cruel to me until well into their adulthoods. As OP said, she was just as innocent as her sister's unborn child currently is, and did not deserve to be treated the way OP was. She cannot expect for OP to be welcoming and open after everything OP went through. OP describes them as being really cruel with her, and so as adults, she and her siblings have to be aware of the harm they did. OP should not disrupt her life for them. If needed, she should block them and go completely no contact. OP does not need a constant reminder about the pain they caused in her life. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Quote, Your father resented you for ruining his family. That man ruined his own family. Maybe if he didn't stick his wiener in another woman while married, his precious little family wouldn't have been ruined. Not the a-hole at all. Keep no contact if possible. You're not the a-hole. You finally vented your frustrations, and they thought you'd be desperate enough to run back to them. You went your whole life begging for acceptance, and when it finally dawns on them why, they are the victims? Nope. They asked for this. I'm sorry your dad and his family were so terrible to you. Forget that blaming yourself for ruining their family crap. Your piece of crap father did that, and wasn't man enough to live up to it. And when he was forced to, he resented it. You are innocent in all this, and they are just plain horrible human beings going on to raise more horrible human beings. You are not the a-hole, and just block them all and get a new number. I have known, been dating my wife for six years, and we have been spiritually married for two years. We are not legally married, although at this point we are essentially common law. We are both high earners, 
both earning over 175 k a year after tax. We purchased our home together and have agreed to split the finances 50-50. We paid for our wedding, honeymoon, everything 50-50, although I did pay for the cost of our rings and her engagement ring. Our mortgage payments were 50-50, and we comfortably own our home now, so much of our income goes to savings, investments, home improvements, and discretionary spending. Because of our incomes, we felt it would be best to keep our finances separate. We're both highly independent people and both very career-driven. It's part of the reason I'm so attracted to her. She's amazing at what she does, and I'm so proud to be able to introduce her as my wife and explain what she does. Unfortunately, our first two years of marriage were hampered by virus and lockdowns. We would have loved to have traveled and saved up quite a bit in order to do this. A couple months ago, we had a talk and decided it might be a good time to have kids instead of continuously waiting for a better or safer travel conditions. Without too serious discussion about it, we decided to stop using birth control and let things happen as they will. Yesterday, I came home and my wife was on the phone. She seemed like she was in a hurry to end her conversation and tried to evade my question when I asked who she was talking to. It was her sister. They don't talk a lot, so that was a bit weird. She still works from home, so she continued to do some work. Then we had dinner and watched some news. Regular pleasant evening. Then she said she wants to have a serious talk and asks me to make some tea and meet her upstairs at her work desk. I make the tea, bring it up, and she starts talking financials. Her workplace allows for maternity leave for up to a year, but only provides 50% of her salary for up to six months. The remaining six months is unpaid. She was very direct and said that while her insurance would cover the vast majority of hospital-related costs during pregnancy and childbirth, taking a six-month break from work would cost her almost $50,000 since her pay would be cut in half. She is asking me to compensate her for that $50,000 in addition to agreeing to split any related but unexpected costs to pregnancy and childbirth. Her stance is that she is doing something for us to start a family, but it is not a true 50-50 split if she is expected to take a financial hit for it, and I am not, given that our finances are separate. She had a printed list of expectations in terms of what she expected financially, listed some things that her insurance may not cover. I see the logic in that, but I'm really very turned off by this because she is essentially asking me to pay her to have our child, or children. She saw my hesitation and just doubled down. While her idea is to return to work after six months, she says it's a real possibility that she may require more time off and decide, as things happen, to take up to a year off. So she had another plan drafted for that. For the first six months, her work will give her 50% of her salary, and I would compensate her for the rest. But for the next six months, since her work cannot compensate her, and because this loss is something she is doing for the family, she is comfortable splitting the loss of her income and only asking me for 50% of her salary instead of 100% for the second six-month period, and she will take the loss of 50% of her salary. The idea, I guess, is that both of us suffer half the loss of income for the second six-month period. However, if she takes seven to 11 months off, any months after the sixth can be prorated. She expressed that she anticipates and hopes to return to work in six months, but that she wants a contingency plan in the event that she requires a year off. She said that taking more than a year off is something she is very unlikely to do, as it would put her job at risk, but that she's open to exploring a third plan with me if I feel that it's necessary. There are also detailed notes about how she wants to keep housework split, with plans to start saving for both childcare and additional housekeeper expenses for at least the first four years. I kid you not, it's a 16-page ring binder that she handed me with detailed notes, some explanations, and a list of expenses. But the immediate and essential element is that she wants me to pay her fifty dollars to $100,000 to compensate for the loss of her salary for 6 to 12 months as a result of her having our child. I really do not know how to process this. My first thought is shock, because despite our salaries, fifty dollars to $100,000 is a lot to demand. The idea of a payment plan to have a child is just gross. And many couples manage to do this without paying their wives to have children. But then, I suppose most couples are married legally, and a loss to one person's income is a loss to everyone. So, in our situation, it makes logical sense. But there's something so transactional about it that it puts a bad taste in my mouth. I didn't fight it or argue, and she's basically allowing me to think about it, but says if having kids is something we're going to do, she wants to write up an agreement to go to a lawyer. Splitting the cost of that is also in the binder. What really hits me here is that she was talking to her sister on the same day she brings this up to me. Why on that day? On the same day she mentions this to me. They do not talk often. 
I'm partially excited and scared that the timing of this means that she is actually currently pregnant and that my response to her will have real consequences if I disagree with her. She has previously had an A and only told me after the fact, almost a year later, because it was early into dating. I was shocked to learn that when I did, but supported her choice as it's her body, and at the time, having kids would have been the wrong decision for us. Still, the fact that she makes decisions like that so independently has me incredibly cautious right now. I checked trash cans and such for a pregnancy test, but didn't find anything. She also asked for tea instead of coffee, but maybe that is overthinking it because she likes both. I want to ask her if she's pregnant, but we both had busy days today, and I was processing and it didn't even occur to me on that day we first discussed this. Definitely a conversation to have, but I don't know whether that should influence my response here. Since their finances are separate, if OP doesn't support her financially, OP would be asking her to take a loss of 100k plus to have OP's baby. She's just asking to split the costs. If they shared finances, the cost would already be split without needing extra documentation. It makes sense to me that she'd want something in writing since they're not legally married and could really just leave if OP felt like it. If they split up, she'd be out a huge amount of money. If they are not interested in getting married and merging finances, then this seems pretty fair to me. She cares about her financial stability and career and doesn't want to be the only one making sacrifices for this step in their lives. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed that she's prepared enough to know that this needs to be discussed ahead of time. Yes, it sounds very cold-hearted and pragmatic, but fair in my opinion. And now let's hear the community's opinion. OP, I totally get why you feel this is weird and transactional, especially when you put it like she wants me to pay her to have our baby. But come on, bro. That's purely a matter of semantics, and you're smart enough to know that, I hope, if you're pulling in that money. It's 100% just as true to say you are asking her to pay money, an opportunity cost by having your baby. Yes, this is all transactional and weird, but that's the arrangement you already have between you two. What she's pursuing is security and fairness, that's all. If you two have chosen to not marry and keep finances separate indefinitely, that's cool, that's your style, this is simply part of that. If you have a better suggestion that secures her financial stake in this arrangement, you should suggest that. As weird and transactional as it seems, this doesn't seem possible without getting some lawyers involved and putting some ink to agreements. Man, I wish I thought of this. I used to earn 150 k a year when I first fell pregnant. I'm now raising two kids by myself with zero financial help from their father, putting myself through university and living off government benefits, taking work when I can just to keep them fed and clothed. Every minute detail about my life changed having children. Can't say the same for their father. My body changed. My career ended. If only I was as switched on as your wife. My kids could be living a much better life. Kudos to her. I think it's funny how you're all in on doing everything 50-50 and love that she's career and business oriented. Except for the one biggest thing in which you'd carry significantly less of the financial, physical, mental, and emotional burden for years to come. All of a sudden, it's gross to do things 50-50 and operate as individuals in business. My ex and I have known each other since we were teenagers and have always been close. We're very different people though, so we never gave a relationship a try. That changed when we were both in our mid-30s and both ended up being single right around the same time, shortly before winter. Bad timing. Going through a breakup and drinking together while huddling up on the couch for warmth led to more, and we ended up dating. Yes, it was a disaster. Three years of constant fighting until we finally called it quits. You'd be surprised how effectively you can hurt someone's feelings when you've known their wishes and deepest darkest secrets for 20 plus years. We were both really hurt by what we said to each other. I did what I do in these situations and went on a small holiday for a few days. Perfect time for her to gather stuff from my house and move out. That's when she did something that really messed with my head many months in the future. One of my favorite hobbies is doing jigsaw puzzles. It calms me down after work, and I can listen to audiobooks for hours while doing it. And I don't mean some 500-piece puzzle that you can do in an evening. I mean huge puzzles with 15K plus pieces. Largest was 42K. I've got a whole room in my basement with a huge custom-built table just for puzzles. It's great because the puzzle can just stay on the table for weeks or months while I plug away at it, and there's no chance of actually bumping pieces off the table and vacuuming them up. Why is that hobby important? because she knew how much I enjoy it. She could have just smashed the puzzle I was working at the time or destroyed the table when she moved out. But no, she simply grabbed a big handful of pieces, 
Not enough to be noticeable right away, but you're going to notice when you're getting close to finishing it. Many months later, we still weren't talking all that much. We just needed time to cool off. I kept doing my jigsaw puzzle and got close to finishing it. That's when I started to notice that some pieces were definitely missing. Being the nerd that I am, I complained about it in our friend's chat group. I blamed the manufacturer for making a low-quality puzzle. My ex is in that group and saw my messages. Barely 10 minutes went by when she sent a single picture without a comment. It was one of my puzzle pieces with a small note next to it that read 5 euro. The chat was erupting with laughter, cheers and my frustration. She didn't write anything. A day goes by and another picture appears. This time, the piece was laying on the floor in her basement with a 10 euro next to it. This went on for days. Every day a new picture in a new location with ever-increasing ransom demands. She put real effort into messing with me. Can you imagine how frustrating it is when every day, at the exact same time, you know what's going to be posted in your friend's chat group? You open the app and yep, there it is. Your friend's laughing their butts off at your misfortune. She could have just thrown those pieces away, but she kept them for months just to torture me. Kudos to her. A truly devilish move that I really respect. In retrospect, it actually makes me chuckle. We've patched things up since then and we're back to being really good friends. The hostages were exchanged for a few bottles of wine. Nobody can mess with your head like your friends. The hostages were exchanged for a few bottles of wine broke me. I love this for you guys that you were able to resolve your differences and save your friendship. Your ex is genius at petty revenge. Never piss her off again or you'll drive yourself insane just wondering what she might do. If she really hated your guts, she'd have grabbed a bunch of pieces from one box, put them in another, and repeat that cycle a couple of times. Revenge Revenge would have been to screen grab, scale, and print them out, mount to cardstock, cut them out and install them in the puzzle, post the completed puzzle pick when done. 